previously on Restoration, the team narrowly escaped a collapsing cavern as Gwen pulled out the big guns, or in this case a tidal wave, and headed back to the inn to rest. Tensions remain high as they try to follow up on Alaric Drake. It is the next morning, and you are decently well-rested. The inn is not the fanciest you've ever stayed in, but it was also, you know, nice beds far away from a creepy, creepy village. And no, no mean locks trying to chew me, so that was good. Loved that. Yeah, no nightmares. <laughs> Hallucinations of people speaking, it's fine. Isn't it nice to be somewhere normal again? Yay. <laughs> So you guys were planning to just go down and talk to the innkeeper in the morning, or what was the idea? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like the most logical thing to do. Yeah. So he's a little bit busy with the breakfast rush at the moment, but it's easy enough to grab his attention and you know, let him know that when it calms down a minute or two to come over and uh, talk with you. And he seemed open to that. Uh, while we are waiting for Lucas to, uh, you know, finish up with his breakfast rest, Raphael's going to, you know, just take a little look around and see if people are still angry about them being here as they were last time. I guess make a perception roll then. Dirty 20. Most of them seem to be okay with you because news has already started to spread that you cleared out the mean locks. So no one glaring daggers at us anymore. No. Progress. Nobody seems to be glaring at you or staring other than the usual stares of people looking at a drow and an assorted group of elves uh, in a human city. Chaz is completely oblivious, just stretching and yawning like, oh, what a great rest. Oh. I feel like I did not actually sleep that well because I was up studying and learning some spells. I must have just brought some shit with me from school. Nerd, you were doing your homework? <laughs> yeah, I was doing my homework. <laughs> Summer school work. Oh, no. I'm going to fall behind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of bleary-eyed. Is there coffee? Is there, there needs to be coffee. Viernan just slides you a mug. He's also a little out of it this morning. <laughs> Sarathiel checks up on Viernan because he did not have a good day. So, Viernan, how are you feeling this morning? You all right? Feeling better? <sighs> Much better now that we're away from there. Thank you. Oh, Good. I feel like it was probably like there wasn't a lot further down to go with your general <laughs> vibe yesterday. <laughs> you can uh, say that again. I'm going to miss that cat. So you guys just kind of settle in, you get your coffee, you get some breakfasty stuff, and Lucas does eventually come over. Midsummer is the next night. So in theory, this guy might be coming here soon. Mm -hmm. In the primary timeline, it is midsummer. Actually, midsummer is past. But through the portal, they were supposed to be the same time of year, just 100 years in the past. I had assumed when they said, I'll meet you at midsummer, I meant midsummer back in Silvery Moon and Aptap. That was a implication, but not necessarily accurate. Well, Okay. He came through a portal, theoretically, on purpose, so maybe this is an established meeting place. Hmm. Well, Sarathiel's definitely not going to pick that up. Six in, head empty. Lucas comes over and sits at your table, hands the photo back over to Viernan that V had given him the previous night. I don't know the man personally, but he had reserved a room here, and he had some business nearby and was coming back, I think. He should be back today, maybe tomorrow. So we just hang out here. Obviously, that's why we came through the portal, Gwen. Well, it's, I do have more homework, so that's fair. Oh, God, homework, really? They're not going to give me a break, Chaz, okay? <sighs> have you tried sleeping with any of your professors? That usually works. I recoil in horror and stare at you. <laughs> 
Absolutely not, I say, turning bright red. Of course, all right, I'm sorry for implying that you like having fun in your life. I just look at you, <laughs> just big wounded, enormous eyes, I'm just... I like to have fun. Okay, don't- I'm no. gonna go study. I go sit in a corner and crack open a book. Great. So while you guys are teasing yourselves uh, or whatever you're doing, Vernon is just talking with the innkeeper a little bit more. Is Drake apparently rented the room and kept the room. And Vernon fills Lucas in on the fact that we're actually looking for him, not just trying to find him. He's made off with some of our things and we need to actually investigate him. And is there any way that we could maybe get into his room? Oof, not going to do that. That was a nat one. Vernon apologizes for offending Lucas with that, but knows that his aptap credentials won't mean anything out here since it's before aptap and half the people here have no concept of time travel outside of spells. That uh, is a little trickier now, but when Lucas goes back to serving the other patrons, he just kind of looks over at Chaz. Chaz just bats his eyelashes like, yes, think you could help us uh, break in? Oh, I thought you would never ask, using a key, what you think I am. Serathiel so says, oh boy, uh, all right, so we're breaking and entering, okay. Serathia, we have to, I mean, you just saw the innkeeper was offended by the idea that we go snooping around. Well, can't we just, okay. Serathiel is a good boy, he doesn't like the idea of breaking and entering. I back this up, I also do not agree with this. <laughs> He's not even here, who cares? Okay, but that that's not the point. The point is that he stole Aptap property. He's wreaking havoc with timelines. Like, we need to find out more about what happened. And he's a suspected person involved in the bombing at our organization, I'll remind you. I suppose that's true. He's already, like, pressing buttons on his utility belt. Maybe wait until it's a little less suspicious. He's not, like, pulling them out. He's not that dumb. We'll try to lay, lay low until the lunch rush and then try to break in. So is there anything that you guys do while you're waiting? Gwen is doing homework. How did you even fit that in your bag? Uh, I don't pack much else. For example, I don't need other clothes. The ones I'm wearing are fine. But I did bring, I bring out of my bag six tomes. Wait, 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 wait. Y you only brought one set of clothes. I like look at him confused and I go, yes. Oh, I mean, I guess prestidigitation, you could just make them clean again. I don't have prestidigitation. <laughs> you just skipped like so many basic spells <laughs> just like i don't admit that i just nod my head sagely and i say yes that would work <laughs> oh god chaz is still horrified no 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 he pulls out a notebook and it's full of sketches of like, fashion designs he's like nope absolutely not Ch no chaz i'm fine look look everything is fine do you see how many books i was able to bring and i just like point at the like six tomes gwen we're gonna have to talk about field prep <laughs> Field prep. Does that mean? Did, did you want me to bring more books? Oh, Vernon, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No. I didn't realize. I don't think I could fit more than six, but I did try. <sighs> Great. Now I have to go shopping. I'm going to make you some new clothes because this is absolutely ridiculous. To be fair, we're all in uniforms, so we have a couple uniforms with us, but ye. the same shirt for several days, Chaz is horrified. So eventually, after maybe half an hour or so, Gwen is finishing up his homework, I guess. Serethiel sits down across from you and waits for you to look up at him. It takes a bit. He senses the presence, but he's just like, he's like, I'm really interested in writing this spell down. Okay, so he, he looks up and he goes, he's always kind of surprised because he's so pretty. So he like looks up at him and starts stuttering a little bit. I uh, know. Hi, Sir Ethel. What are you? Did you mean to sit here? Are you? Con did you want to sit somewhere else? I can move. And he starts like getting his papers and like. No, you don't have to move. Listen, he puts his hand on the book to keep it down on the table. I have an offer to make you, if you're amenable. I sit back down carefully and look at him. An offer? An what, what kind of offer? Uh, a trade. A sort of equal exchange. I sort of pat myself absentmindedly like, I don't think I have anything on me. <laughs> Uh, no, not that, not that kind of, uh, you recall a few days ago, I mentioned to you that you have the build for someone who could very easily use a rapier. Oh, yeah. Are you actually interested in learning how to use a melee weapon? I get big starry eyes. Wait, are you offering? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, I would love, I would be so cool with a rapier. I'm just like, like one of those knights in the book. Can you imagine? And I start miming, slashing things. Well, most knights don't use... 
Never mind, that's not important. I was thinking I could help you train how to use a rapier or any weapon you like, really. If in exchange, he pauses and he like looks over his shoulder to make sure that like the door is closed. If in exchange, you're willing to teach me elven. That like stops me in my tracks. Just teach you how to... Yeah, I mean, I can teach you elven. I mean, I've never really taught anyone before, and people say that I talk too much, so maybe that might be a problem, but I think we can make it work. Well, I mean, if you're talking too much in Elven, I feel like that would probably be beneficial. That's true. It's an immersion class. Oh, you're so smart, Zerathiel. Uh, if you if you say so. I'm perfectly willing to train you in the basics of combat. So you really want it's a rapier? You don't want... I don't have a rapier on me. I've only got... And he, like, gestures over his shoulder at God Eater, which is a huge two-handed sword. I step back involuntarily. I just take a recoil. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to touch that. That looks big. That's... No. Yeah, it is. Also, it, it, it lights on fire. Yes, it does that as well. Yes. Well, I borrowed Viennin's rapier and he holds it up. He says, we can, you know, head out. There's a small training yard out behind the inn. Oh, wait, like now? Did you have something else to do? Oh. I looked down at the pile of papers. No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. I have 100% still have homework to do, but that's fine. And I'm kind of like bouncing on my heels a little bit. Do I get to hold it? I'm going to get to hold it, right? I mean, you you scarcely could learn how to use a sword if you didn't hold it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Now that's, yeah, when you say it like that, it's like, yeah, okay. He says, all right, well. Viernan has this twinge, like, oh god, something bad's gonna happen. I will say, Sir Ethiel, he in six, head empty, no brain, but also, fighting does not require a brain. I'm not worried about you, I'm worried about Gwen stabbing himself in the eye. That is a concern, that is a reasonable concern. Can you hold a rapier upside down? Because if there's a way to do that. <laughs> That's, I just, sword 101, hit them with the pointy end. Oh... So, yeah, I feel like it wouldn't be fair to be, like immediately bump his strength up or whatever. But like, also, if you're if you're using a rapier, I believe it might be better for it to be a dex bump rather than a, a strength bump. That's actually not bad. I actually have a plus two mod in dex. So this is something like presumably we're going to need to do a couple times a week, that kind of thing. A couple times a week for a month or two. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Sir Ethiel is a, is a pretty competent teacher. I feel like the thing with like rapiers, I have, I've actually held like one rapier like one time. <laughs> and I remember it being like, oh man, it's hard. It's like fine to keep it up at first. And then after you're like, my arm really hurts. This is hard <laughs> keeping my arm up. So I feel like that's what Gwen is like. I imagine your father too. This is passed down through generations and you're like, oh, it's so heavy. Please take it back. Oh no. I feel like this is what Gwen does, where it's like, at first he's like, oh, this isn't so bad at all. And then he's like, can I put my arm down? It's really heavy. It's so heavy. Serethiel is very patient, oh. but however, he's like, you just have to exercise your arm. And over time, you'll build endurance and muscle mass. And he's very reassuring. He's like your dad. Like, yeah, you got this, buddy. Oh. You can do it. Do I need to start doing push-ups? And I sort of look at my arms like... <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I might need to ask for help on that one, too. We'll start with modified push-ups. How about that? <laughs> okay, yeah. Chaz, did you stay down in the common area with Fiernan, or did you go somewhere? I'm still extremely bothered by Gwen not having any clothes, so yeah. I'm definitely- I, I need to, like, go shopping, like, right now. <laughs> Well, there's, there's nowhere here that you'd be able to really go shopping. Does anybody want to trade me fabric? I have really shiny things. Everything here will be very, like, outdated. It's probably not a good idea. You know where shops are. Like, you don't need to do this immediately. <laughs> true. That is true. So I feel like you've probably been talking with Viernan about this and rambling about this. And Viernan's just like, no, come on, focus. Focus on the actual important thing, not the fact that Gwen might stink. You're right. I should focus. I should not be talking to you. I should. There are many beautiful men. Goodbye. I'm going to flirt. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody who is sitting alone, eating breakfast by themselves? This is not how I expected this going. Okay. We're finally that campaign. <laughs> Roll to seduce the barmaid. Tessa never lets us do this. Uh, yeah, there's a couple people sitting alone. Let's see, make a perception check for me real quick. Nice. Good job, Chaz. <laughs> Go have some coffee. You had a bad night. There are lots of feelings. I feel you. <laughs> well, so there's plenty of pretty people here. Uh, none of them look particularly familiar from the other day, so that could be good. Hmm. You find, oddly enough, another elf. Oh, well. What kind of elf are we talking? <laughs> he is a tall, dark, and handsome elf going with the trope. He has been watching you, but it doesn't seem to be the usual wary watching that you're used to getting from other people. 
All right. Well, I'm going to saddle on up to him then. All righty then. What's your opener? God. Chaz puts on his most winning smile and says, well, good morning. The other elf had been watching you, but also had a book or two out and he just closes the book as you approach. Good morning to you as well. I couldn't help but notice your eyes following me. You'll notice his eyes are actually very striking silver. The fuck is this guy? And as Chaz notices that, he's like, oh, and what striking eyes those are. (laughs) Thank you. You're quite striking yourself. I know. Thank you for noticing. Not from around here, obviously. No, obviously not. But what brought you here? Oh, a bit of business, work, boring. He just kind of arches an eyebrow at that, like, oh? Yeah, we're actually looking for someone. Really? Yeah. He, um, well, let's just say he stole important things and we need them back. Oh, he's absolutely shocked. Speaking of stealing, might I steal some more of your time and might I join you for some more conversation? His lips just kind of twist in a smirk. Sure. So I guess you guys just start talking about stuff. How do you go from I'm here on work to laying it on thick? At 10 in the morning, I'm really intrigued how you go that way. First of all, there is no set time to be thirsty. That's all the time every day. So second of all, he doesn't really want to talk about work stuff because he just had that conversation with Beard and he's like, focus. And he's like, oh, this is like the opposite of focus. Just what he just wants, you know, relax. It's been pretty tense, especially after last night. You know, he definitely puts on his most charming expression. So what is it that caught your attention? Well, it's not often that I see a group of other elves in this neck of the woods. Hmm. True. I did notice that you do stand out from the other patrons here. (laughs) Not quite as much as yourself. Mm, Of course. Well, we can't all be as striking as myself. That's true. (laughs) Is there a name to go with this beautiful pair of eyes? He just smiles and says, you can call me Argent. Oh, well played. Well, Argent, what brings such a striking elf as yourself to these parts? Uh, A little business as well, but... Nothing quite as interesting as yours, I'm sure. Just a bit of trade. Ah, trade. And what is it that you intend to trade here? Well, I would prefer to trade names, since I gave you mine. Of course. How rude of me. You may call me Chaz. He smirks at you. Well, since we both stand out, it's only natural that I'd want to know more about what is so intriguing about me. Without any offense meant, it's unusual to see a drow in the company of other elves. Ah, that is very true. And no offense was taken, worry not. Roll a persuasion, see if you kind of persuade him to give any more information up, just with some of the flattery about his eyes. So after that, failing hilariously. Yeah, he's okay with a little flirtatious talk, but not really interested in talking his business. Oh, well. That's fair. He's also like not really terribly in the mood for continuing. He's like, all right, well, that's fine. You know, just here for some fun. (laughs) That was lovely to meet you. Indeed. I hope to see you around more. Never know, you might. So Serethiel comes in afterwards. He he and Gwen, they're both a little sweaty. They've been, pra- well, okay, Gwen is probably a mess. No, no, I am very sweaty. I am a disgusting, I'm regretting not having more clothes, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Serathiel just has a light sheen of sweat. His hair is a bit slick. He strides in right past this guy that Chaz is chatting up, winks at him, and keeps walking. Oh yeah, you drew his attention. (laughs) Yep. To ruin the moment, I stomp by wet. (laughs) And I'm just like dripping sweat everywhere. (laughs) And I walk right by this guy's table. Yeah, his nose kind of wrinkles as you pass. (laughs) (laughs) Serathiel pats you on the back, says, all right, back into the bath with you. You did very well for your first day. Oh, everything hurts. <laughs> Don't forget to use prestidigitation on your clothes. I look horrified. I go and find the innkeeper where, like, their tub of water is so I can go immerse my entire body in it. Oh, God. And Vernon gives you a pair of clothes that you can wear in the meantime and, like, wash yours. I've never seen him that sweaty. What on earth did you do to him, Serathiel? Oh, I'm teaching him how to use a rapier. Oh, can he hold it for more than three seconds? <laughs> you know, he's working on his endurance, trying very hard. It's 
it's about lunchtime by the time Gwen is all cleaned up and nice and you guys get back together. Just to kind of keep things a little bit more normal, Virnan ordered lunch early. You guys were lunching in your rooms so that you could talk about business and whatever. I guess V or somebody else can keep watch to make sure nobody's coming down the hall while you attempt this. Serethiel, Serethiel will keep watch. He, he can't pick locks and he's also very strong, so he'll stand at the end of the hallway. Fair enough. I have proficiency with thieves tools and smith tools, so I'm assuming thieves tools because, you know, hello lockpicking. So that's a sleight of hand check. Chaz being Chaz is going to check the door for traps first before he does anything. This one is untrapped. Rather, it might have had a trap on it at one point, but it has been disabled. He does like a thumbs up at the group like, yay, I can continue to break and enter now. Oh, not as good as I'd hoped. It's a little tricky lock just because it's kind of a shitty lock and those are always worse. And it's back in time too. This is, These old locks, pa. Newfangled magical locks are so much easier. But you do get it and it's pretty dark inside. The window shades seem to have been drawn. There's no candles lit or anything. But you guys have dark vision. So you see a body on the floor. <laughs> what fun. A what? A body. As soon as I open the door, I'm like, oh. Fiernan, oh, oh shit. He goes over. Sarathiel closes the door and he says, oh, gods, is it, is it dead? It? Y- yes, he, he is dead. Well, I can't tell the gender of a corpse. I don't want to assume a corpse is gender. He can't ask its pronouns. Gosh, he's just being polite, Vernon. Yeah, Vernon, God. I mean, he's wearing an aptap uniform. There's probably only a few people this could be. Mm. Right, so investigate the body, I guess, or at least surrounding to see what- You roll him over and he matches the picture that V snatched off of his uh, staff file. (laughs) It's Drake. It was Drake. Yep, it's his body. Oh boy. (laughs) Okay, well- and you said you were doing a uh, perception check to see what's nearby? Oh, yes. Oh, oh very nice. <laughs> there we go. That's a roll. 20, yay. He had been stabbed, and underneath a dresser nearby, you find a bloody dagger that seems to have fallen or been dropped. Oh. Fingerprint it. <laughs> Print it. We don't do fingerprints in D&D. We have photos and email, but fingerprinting? Don't be ridiculous. Chaz just takes note of the dagger and is like, well, someone was quite sloppy in their work. Anything unusual about the dagger? Make a perception check, anybody who's looking at it. If it is an investigation roll, I rescind my offer to roll. <laughs> if it is an investigation, that's fine. I will investigate. I would still like Serathiel to make me a roll. Oh, okay. Okay, if you insist. I do. Well, there, there we go. It rolled a seven. That's what you wanted. Serathiel stares at it and says, hmm, I think that might be a dagger. Ooh, well done. That's an astute observation, but I, and I like shoulder past you. There's the very vaguest niggling Serathiel that it looks like maybe you've seen this before, but then you remember, oh no, it's a dagger. I've seen daggers before. Of course I've seen it before. It's a dagger. I see daggers all the time. Yeah, Gwen and Chaz, you didn't roll on this one, but- Oh, I didn't. It's just, it's a very ornate dagger. It seems like maybe it's a sort that might come in pairs, you know, for like specialty daggers or things like that. And it has a sapphire in the handle. Hmm. Well, what are the chances of finding a dagger with sapphires and a mine full of gemstones? I feel like that's very reasonable. Yeah, don't gems come from mines? I specifically saw them in the one we just came from, is what I'm trying to say here. Right, but like, finding an unfinished gem and finding a dagger that has the same gem, you know, maybe there were other things in that mine. Maybe it's not that big a coincidence? Hmm, maybe. Is there anything else around the room? So, like, the door was locked. Did did the person have a key and lock it? Or, like, did they look like they got out the window? Like, is there anything else we can see? Yeah, it looks like, seems like no forced entry. Maybe whoever killed him took the key and left. You do notice that he is missing his bracer, which is not good. (laughs) That's very not good. Oh, dear. Yeah, and he seems like he's been dead for a few days. Like, maybe he was supposed to go somewhere and he didn't. Well, that's just lovely. 
So I thought, well, he won't be making his rendezvous at midsummer, I suppose. Hmm, suppose not. That does leave the question of who specifically killed him, and was it to avoid the rendezvous? Or, hmm. I suppose we really should have something done with his body. For all his faults, he was an aptap employee, and he deserves to be returned to his family. Right, well, I'm the one who broke in, so I'm not going to be the one to announce to the innkeeper that <laughs> I broke in, so it's <laughs> going to be one of you. Well, we could also just go back and lock the door and then be like, it's weird, we smell this horrible smell coming from this room. <laughs> it offends my elvish sensibilities. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed it, but it smells weirdly like death under the door, so have you considered maybe opening it? Well, here's the thing. We need them to release this corpse to our custody, which they probably won't do if we start a formal investigation in this timeline. Oh, no. Absolutely not. Oh, you're right. Okay. We just need to, like, bro, yeah, we need to steal his body and take him home. Great! Adding breaking and entering and grave sort of robbing. No, it has to be in an actual grave to rob it. It's, you're right. Just picking up random bodies on the ground is not grave robbing. It's not a crime. <laughs> It's not, you're right, Gwen, you are I so right. I studied this, and it's not a crime. <laughs> Vernon, whose sister is a literal necromancer, is just like, oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that's a good idea. Smithiel so says, maybe the best course of action would be to have, to return to the timeline and have Aptap officials take it back. Mm. People with actual credentials, not just four dipshits who wandered I'm in. I'm not a dipshit. <laughs> Uh, I think we're all a little bit dipshit. You, aren't you guys supposed to be professionals? I, l- I look at Chaz and Virna, not Sarathiel. Yes. Yes, and you also join this team, so that means you're supposed to be professional too. Okay. No, I, I'm an intern, but what are, what are we supposed to do? I'm like looking at you like... While all of you are doing this, Vernon is checking for the files that Drake had stolen, and there's no sign of them. So it seems like they were also taken by whoever killed him. Great. So, yeah, Serathiel's idea of maybe sending in a different Aptap team, not necessarily a bad one. Finding another Aptap team could be tricky, which is why you yahoos were assigned this anyway. The good news is that uh, we have time travel, so we can, we can send them before we discover the corpse. Or, or, wait, does that mean that the corpse that shouldn't would be cause here a right paradox? Now? <laughs> Let's mm. maybe avoid paradoxes. All right, well. Also, he is missing his bracer, and that is very concerning. That might get up, tap, up and moving to get this corpse back a little quicker. I mean, we could always just use the emergency teleport on our bracers and just take him back with us right now from this room. We ha- Wait, that's a thing? We could do that? Gwen, didn't you read the training manual? I did. That's a good point. Sarathiel so says, but don't we have to meet someone here at Midsummer in his place if we can? Although we don't know where or who. And we definitely don't have the file. Mm. I, like, they stole our files. Our faces are on them. Yeah. And somebody has portal technology, and I don't like that. Yeah, it feels like we should get this reported back to our authorities. All right, he says, I guess I'm... He very, Serathiel is reluctantly accepting the idea that he's going to be the one who has to pick up the body to, for the transport. I mean, he's, he's happy to help you. He's not strong, but... Oh, Sir Athiel's the one with 18 strength. He'll do it. He's not going to be happy about it, but he'll do it. Vernon's a healer. He's dealt with dead bodies before. Yeah, but he, I'm strong boy, is the thing. Uh, Sir Athiel reluctantly picks the body. I was like, let's get this over with. Let's just get out of here. Vernon takes the dagger since it's at least one possible clue to who did this. Sir Athiel, fireman carries a corpse. Check that off the list of things that he uh, never thought he'd have to do. So I guess we use the emergency teleport on either Chaz's or V's bracer. I'm interested, where do we actually land when we use the emergency teleport? It takes you back into Aptap HQ. And this one, it was coded to the Artificer's quarters, since we used Chaz's. Mm -hmm. If we used Vernon's, it would probably take us to the the healing hall. So Serathiel just pops into the middle of the Artificing quarter with a corpse over his shoulder and be like, listen, I can explain. Please no one panic. Don't worry, they're all busy with their experiments. Literally no one cares. Just keep walking. It's not the first time this has happened, I can assure you. Be it on your head, then. Where are we putting this thing? Come on, let's, let's take him over to the medical areas. At least until we can contact family, if there are any. As they walk, Sarathiel says, well, that sure was a mission. Indeed. Yeah, no kidding. Didn't really accomplish anything, but we did at least kind of find him. We flooded a room full of mean locks, so I think that was something. Yes, we definitely did something, V. We did help people, yes, but it was not our mission. <laughs> you were right. Mm. 
So I think that reporting a corpse is going to require talking to ad- in a administrator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Luckily, Chaz, you know one. Yay! All right. So you know exactly where your bestie's desk is. <laughs> of course I know where to go. I go bother them all the time. She's a little alarmed by the fact that you guys are all so disheveled. And we're bringing a dead body into her office. <laughs> No, I figured you drop the dead body off in, like, the medical area first. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Serethiel wants this thing off his shoulder ASAP. So she has a little desk, and, like, normally she's over in the main building, but now she's over in this building because the explosion rattled everything, and it's just, it's fine. She's crammed into a smaller area than usual. It's fine. So how do you approach her with this news? Oh, well, first of all, Chaz, like, walks in and immediately sits on her desk amidst all the papers. <laughs> Oh my god, you will never guess what happened. So you come in and you sit on her desk and Taina just like, Oh, Chaz, come on, I just sorted those, get off. And this half-orc just kind of shoves at you. She's very, very gorgeous. She has decorations on her tusks and dresses very nicely, very professionally. There's appearances to be kept up here. When she shoves him, Chaz overdramatically makes it look like he falls over. Oh, the brute strength you have. <sighs> I thought we weren't stereotyping. I am but a frail boy. You know that. You're so big and strong. <laughs> Don't try to flatter me. Yeah, what's up? Okay, we well- We found a corpse. Yes. Thank you, Sarathiel. We found a corpse. You what? Mm. We were sent to investigate the missing, some missing items and uh, <gasps> the person who took them. We found him, but nothing else. And he's quite dead. You, you what? You- I know- He's in the medical wing, if you want to see him. I would not recommend it. He's been dead for a couple of days. He is quite smelly. Oh, so sure. No, thank you. No. Mm-mm. Mm. No, I leave that to field agents. No, thank you. I'm just an admin. I do the paperwork. Right, <sighs> which is why we're here. We do definitely need someone God, who why knows. why do we need that 1459 form? Ugh. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> she starts rummaging through file desks to try to find the right form to fill out for accidental death. Chaz goes right back to leaning against the desk. He was an Abtap field agent, if you weren't already aware of that. So we also need to make next of kin notifications if if we can. Okay. And we need this addendum. She starts rifling through even more files. Wow, I could not do this job, Sir Thiel decides immediately. That is so much paper. I am in love. This is what I want to do now. I've changed my job description. No, you still want to be a librarian. Come on. Okay, but I would like to be in charge of things at the library so I have lots of paperwork like this. God, you're such a nerd. <laughs> right. Okay, well, uh, here's your paperwork. I, ugh. Are they Are they already processing? Are they getting little photos? I mean, I, we left them in the medical wing, so I assume so. Yeah, no, they're, they're doing the usual processing. Thanks, Tanya. And so she just gives you the paperwork. Chaz, she kind of pulls you aside before while the others are filling it out. And it's like, so how did we find a dead body? Oh, funny story. So that was after I was flirting. There's this gorgeous elf, by the way. He had silver oh God, eyes. Of course oh. there was. Of course there was. And I found him. Oh, my God. Anyway, after that didn't go so well. You're so predictable. I know. But then you know what? It's Sarathiel. He tall and handsome he strolls in and all sweaty and gives him a wink and of course that works (laughs) yeah you know not surprised anyway serathio's already forgotten the encounter well of course my skills are most uniquely suited for breaking and entering so oh there was b and e involved got it of course that's the second time with this guy right well that's what the report said indeed okay well, I mean, I guess it's justified in this case, because, yeah, if we thought he was a mole. Right, he stole important documents. Which we did not recover, by the way. Sorry, I forgot to add that. We did not recover the files. They were missing. Oh, crap. Okay, she pulls out another form. Wow, there's a form for everything. <laughs> right, the only thing we found was a dagger. And his bracer was missing, Fiernan adds. Oh, oh Seriously? She goes to a different file and pulls out a much bigger form. I like pop up helpfully behind Chaz's shoulder and I'm like, how many forms do you have? For this? Just, you know, in general. Like how many forms just in the office? I need to know. Uh, I have a notepad. I'm poised to write on it. I don't know that anybody's ever counted them. What? Oh, Tan, by the way, this adorable creature. 
<laughs> I don't think you've met our intern. This is Gwyneth Battlestar. Pleasure to meet you, Gwyneth. It's a pleasure to meet you. I step forward and give her a big two-handed handshake. This is the best office I've ever seen. You have so much paperwork. Now, to clarify, it's two-handed because your hands are tiny compared to hers. <laughs> <laughs> Little Twinkie elf hands versus orc hand. Her whole hand is probably bigger than your head. Yes. <laughs> I'm like enthusiastically shaking her one hand up and down. I'm looking around and I'm just like, this is the coolest place I've ever seen. You must be so excited to come to work every day. I would love this job. <laughs> she kind of ruffles your hair. <laughs> <laughs> he just grins at Tanya. Wow. Okay. Uh, enthusiastic. How did you get assigned to field work? I think they made a mistake. It's been kind of exciting and I got to know Chaz and Sarathiel and Viernin. And I still get to do my homework, so it's, honestly, it's been great. She does not know what to make of you, but that's okay. I look at her and I say, I guess you're just gonna, you'll get back to me about the form thing, right? And I just sort of like nod and I'm like, okay, then I, I like turn back and like keep looking around. Sarathiel's so like, how would you like to fill out all the paperwork for us, Gwyned? Ooh, I would love to do that. Oh, Fernand's gonna help you because some of these are complicated. Yeah. I feel like I take one and I start trying to write stuff down. Nope, nope. Wait, wait, wait. Correct that date. Remember, 100 years in the past. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we have to record over in this box the date that we left. <laughs> this is turning into the best day of my life. Chaz just sort of gives Tanya a look like, yep, he sure is like that with a capital T. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bestie. <laughs> You're welcome, Chaz. Just please don't sit on them next time. I mean, what else am I supposed to do? You, do you see how tall Sarathiel is? I have to show off my long legs somehow. That's the only thing I have one up on him. You understand that, right? Like, he's 6'5", and I'm a short king. I'm 6'2". Whatever. My legs are literally the only thing that I have to show off. You're selling yourself a bit short there, bud. Oh, ha ha. So this says, I like, I, like, I like your metal leg. I like it. It's shiny. It's good. It I like is. It I made it myself. Thank you. Is that something Drow can do? Just grow metal legs? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Todd just stifles a laugh in the background. <laughs> He's like, no, no, we can. All, can any elf? If I cut my own, like, no, 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 <laughs> no. That's not how that works. Oh, no, he looks very disappointed. Right, they don't grow back. That's why I had to make a new one. Oh, you know that makes sense now that you explain it like that. And I don't normally like doing this before the reports are actually written up, but we should probably go tell the administrant what we found. Sarathiel immediately starts looking for an exit to dive out of. He notices. No, no, you should actually come with us. Right. Do I have to? You were there. You carried the body. Oh, well, yeah. But you seem like an important part of our, our group, and, you know, she needs to hear your report as well. Uh, all right. I guess. We'll keep it quick. I mean... We don't have the report written up for anyway yet, so. Okay. Chaz makes like he's going to pat you on the back, and he stops in midair and just gives you a thumbs up instead. Sarathiel does not notice. Sarathiel is too nervous. Well, don't worry. In and out. Be super quick. All right. Let's get it over with, I suppose. We head back over to the main Aptap building. You guys have been gone, I think we said... So it's been about three and a half-ish days. Yeah, I feel like we have to report why you've used one of the emergency recalls anyway, too, so. I feel like it would, like, ding. Like, if it's been used, someone would know about it. Yeah. So you guys head over to the main building, and not a lot has progressed on the rebuilding, because it's only been, like, three days. But they've at least gotten some of it straightened out since the office was rifled through. And the secretary just lets you in pretty much immediately. There's not, not much of a wait outside Oriana's door today. She looks up from reading some of the reports on other teams' work. Oh, uh, you're back. Already? Serafiel clams up. Uh, yeah, um, it was not entirely successful. Oh, what do you mean, Vernon? Well, we found Drake, but we didn't find the files, and unfortunately he was not in a state to tell us anything. Because he was dead, that's why. In case that wasn't clear, he's dead. Dead? Oh, I see. Uh, did you find out anything about who did it? V, didn't you take that dagger? Yeah, I did. I, I already turned it into the evidence room, but yes. I found a ornate dagger with a uh, sapphire in the pommel, but we didn't didn't see any footprints or anything else distinctive other than that. 
He did solve the mystery that was plaguing Vermilion, so hopefully that will uh, become prosperous again soon. Oh, I wasn't aware it was a cold case. It wasn't one of ours, but there were some mean locks there for some... It was haunted. <laughs> Ugh, yuck. Uh, well, I'm glad that you took care of that. Uh, is there anything else that you needed to do? Or It's odd for you to report in so quickly after a mission. I just put this out there. I'm very intimidated by the administrator. Right. She is very high level, and <laughs> I feel like I'm just sitting next to Serathiel, just like, being like, this is like what teacher was talking. You just don't. <laughs> Aw, I thought you were charmed by her, because like, she actually calls you Gwened, not just Gwen. Yes, but also terrifying. Chaz just looks at both of you like, all right, well, unfortunately, we also found that his body was minus one bracer. Huh. So someone is out there. There were no papers either. So someone is out there with the bracer, and I don't like the implications of that. No, indeed. Say, so, I mean, it stands to reason that whoever took the bracer took the files, and mm. maybe it was the person he was meeting with. Maybe not. Could have been somebody completely different, I suppose. I guess we'll have to get somebody doing a trace on that dagger that you found. Which, thank you for bringing that back. That should be helpful. I suppose we could reach out to the college and see if anybody could do uh, speak with Dad or uh, anything like that. Well, uh, your sister's not in town, is she, Vernon? And he looks very uncomfortable at that. I, I don't think she's in town, but uh, I haven't been to the family house in a little bit. Uh, I mean, she would know speak with Dad for sure. And he looks a little uncomfortable at that. I don't know that he's talked about Selwyn to any of you. So I imagine it like the administrator is bringing it up as though like, oh, that sweet little girl with the hobby. Yeah, she's, um, I think she's still in Candlekeep at the moment, but I can reach out and see. Candlekeep? Oh, man. Do you, do you think we get to meet her? I want to hear all about Candlekeep. Oh, that'd be so cool. I heard, like, I saw all the brochures and it looked really, really cool, but dad was like, it's too far away. And, uh. Well, not to mention you couldn't make the entrance if you didn't find a book that wasn't in their collection. It's pretty mm. hard to get into. Okay, well, also that. But, I mean, your father sounds resourceful. I'm sure he could have managed it, but I, I can reach out to her, I guess. Um. Chaz, do you have one of those um, those, uh, message stones I could use, maybe? Oh, yes. Easily done. Okay. Um, I guess we'll report back when we know a little bit more, if that's all, uh, administrant. She kind of looks over all the rest of you and just notes that there don't seem to be any visible wounds on Seraphiel this time, at least. Which is another reason that she's a little concerned when you came in, like, right after a mission. Yep, Serathiel is standing there looking awkward and a little bit nervous. No, a lot, but a lot nervous. Arms folded over his chest, eyes averted, like there's a Berlin Wall of body language. Well, I guess uh, I'll reach out to the university if you're sure that your sister's not here, but uh, I'll have to keep looking into this. I thought that this would be the end of it. Um, Thank you all, and uh, just let me know if you find anything else. And she just dismisses you all. Serathio is the first out the door. I feel like I'm looking around and everybody's walk out and I'm just like, everyone seems very chill about the fact that this man is dead. Chill is probably not quite the word. I think we're just kind of resigned. Yeah. It does come with the territory, unfortunately. And, you know, all of this mix up and whatnot, it's pretty easy to happen with time travel. So maybe he had a meeting that just didn't go well and we'll try to find out. I'm getting to the, starting to get the impression this job might be slightly more dangerous than I initially understood it to be. Whatever you do, don't tell your dad. Hey everyone, Val here. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of Crit Fail Club, Restoration. If you can't wait to hear what happens next, check out our Discord server for episodes in pre-release, or to listen in live as we record. You can join us by going to bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. We don't advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also enjoy the show, post on social media about it, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel or on other major podcast platforms 
Thanks again for tuning in. 